Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, James the Fat Hello. Man Stevens, and the man who always says yes, Ryan Preston. I watched that movie and it really stuck. <laughs> um, you mean that TV show, Say Yes to the Dress? No, no. Well, that too, because I watched that after I watched Yes Man. Ah, gotcha. It, it was more the fact so, his girl yeah. likes it, and so he's trying to make up an excuse. And it's this, it's this real vicious cycle where I say yes, watching the show, yes, say yes to the dress, and then once watching the show, I said yes to all the dresses, and I have a lot of debt now. I bet. <laughs> That's some expensive shit. Jeez. Um, so uh, before we, uh, the, sh- the the Excuse me. Before the show was starting, we were talking about what games we were playing, and I've been playing. Uh, I was at Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, I like get open. I like open uh, like level games because I don't have a whole lot of time to play, so I can play them for almost for years. Yeah. I think I played Fallout yeah. Four for two and a half years without yeah. getting yeah. bored, and I well, still play here. it. I still play it time to time. Skyrim for what six years? <laughs> Something like that. And now Skyrim's back on every well, they, platform. Well, they they have. Uh... They have some damn good replayability too, but yeah. yeah, I mean, for for you can really level your pace. You know what I mean? As, as much as you want, I fucking got my sixty year old father into playing video games, and the one that did it was Skyrim. But see, and I, and I sort of actually thinking about this. The guy's actually been a bit of a gamer my whole life. He used to play, you know, whatever games that we had. On yeah. uh, he was the one that actually got me into like the old school Warcraft before it turned into the MMO. Yeah. But uh, I got him into Skyrim and then into Fallout. And yeah, like nice. like like Johnny, I mean, he'll play this shit for, you yes. know, nine, ten months before, you know, calling me and saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm level 65. And he's all super proud of it. And I'm like, all right, I'm level 125, dude. That's- yeah, I don't, <laughs> and I don't, this, is, I, this is my third playthrough. Yeah. I would have to actually go and look, but I think my character is over 250. Well, part of yeah. part of my issue is the fact that between work and my my children, it's like I get maybe yeah. maybe four hours a week to play, and that's yeah. half the time. That's and not that's in like the, a four hour block. That's like fifteen minutes here, half hour here. But I was just gonna say, I mean, it is one of those things where you can just kind of, hey, I'm just gonna kind of do a couple of quests and call it quits here before dinner or something. Yeah. yeah. Like my favorite thing about Origins is because Assassin's Creed, you definitely get to screw around. Uh, I killed three of the main characters by accident, and you, you know you kill them because they, there's a uh, was it a cutscene a cutscene that pops up. I did that three times, and I've still idea no idea who they are. And this was at a low level. I literally was just up top of this tower, just hitting people with arrows and shit. Oh, uh-huh. and so that's the reason Hopefully I love you didn't it. Need to talk to them first. Well, do you, I don't now. Yeah. See, when, I, when I'm playing those games, and I think James probably does this uh, version of the same thing. Um, first of all, I loved Assassin's Creed Origins. What a fucking awesome-looking game that was. Oh, but this, this um, I, I try to overpower super early in the game. Like, I will go and craft everything possible. I want to have the best possible shit by the time I start doing, like, story missions. Just yep. so I'm, like, super OP when I fucking run across, like, the boss. Like, oh, you, you're going to talk a bunch of shit? We're well, going to die in, like, two swings. So fuck you. Oh, yeah. the, the greatest thing about Assassin's Creed Origins, if you find really good gear, like I have this bow that, that's automatically have these things on fire, you can level up. You don't have to throw it away and look for another one. You can just level up as you go. So when I find good yeah. stuff, I just yeah, keep yeah. it with me. So yeah, there was Well, um... there, there are certain things that I started to, to I mean, uh, man, I got rid of a lot of gear in that game because there's a lot of different types of stuff as opposed to the old Assassin's Creed where, you know, it was really a limited amount of things you were getting. But this is like the, the oh, you have the spear of such and such and, and the bow of such and such. And they all have different combinations of different stuff. And it was yeah. fun looting. Yeah, my, one of my favorite moments in Skyrim, and if you guys have played any Bethesda games like that, I remember it was the one of the master trainers, hand-to-hand combat. I just walked up to them, and they're like, oh, yeah, we'll train you. And It's part of the quest line. <laughs> so I just straight, like, punched them once. They fell down. Like, oh, yeah, you're more powerful. Let's... I'm like, oh, quest over. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it, it, it totally reminds me of... Assassin's Creed reminds me a little bit of Borderlands, considering how many ridiculous weapons you, you, you run across. Like... This is the, the the weapon of some guy you've never heard of's uh, fury stick, and it's just yeah. like, whoa! It's not as yeah. good as the Wabajack. Uh, man, nothing's it's, as uh, good as the Wabajack. Yeah, 
The Wobba Jack is my favorite weapon of any game of all time. <laughs> exactly. Sure. But, Just because it's, awesome. it's so random. Um, so, uh, did yeah, one man, guy's horse into like a chicken it's, it's and it a... killed the guard? <laughs> Actually, the only the only thing that was as good as that was oh, what it was just the, that wheel. Oh, from Fable. Yes, that's it. Yeah, if you guys haven't played the Fable games, check those out. Those are great. Not the first one, but the second and third, or second and like, yeah, second, second and third one. Third one. It's it, yeah. I think it's vaguely in the second. The second. Yeah, one. It, to some people, like when you first look at it, it may look like a kids game, but that is not a kids game. <laughs> I mean, you can literally have sex with people and have children, and then kill them. Yeah, it, well, it's it's got a very arcade sort of a style to it. I mean, like when yeah. you hit stuff, the little the little orbs drop out that yeah. you go and then collect and. And it's got a real kind of a Zelda vibe, sort of in that way, yeah. um, or or just old school arcade kind of stuff. But but it is a it gets to be a very adult game very quickly. Oh, yeah. It has this wheel of torture, like you strap somebody to it and you hit a switch, and it comes up with some random like uh, way you torture it. And in the yeah. second game, the more you do it, like the evil you become, and it's it's. Yeah, like it's, a, it's, it's hilarious. A fun game, yeah. Like I think you turn people into yeah, it chickens is, and yeah, it just it's one of those shit. first kinds of games where like your actions from day to day literally have an effect on the future, <laughs> yeah, like quite yeah. a bit down the road, you know. So, so you it know, was pretty pretty kind of groundbreaking at that time. Do you know anything about was it Fallout seventy six? Like what exactly mm. it is? Mm. Yeah. So basically, what's going on is it's um, the it's it takes place. All of the fallouts are in a different timeline. So how it basically breaks down quickly is in 2077, nuclear war happens, okay? But let me actually back up even further. Somewhere after World War II, the timeline sort of split where our future went this direction and the fallout future went in the direction of sort of like a 1950s version of the future, you know, where everyone's still wearing those 1950s dresses like the cleavers, but everything's nuclear-powered, like robots and shit. Um, 2077, the bombs drop. Nuclear war happens. But in the meantime, this company, Vault Tech, is building vaults underground to house people for unbeknownst experiments, uh, but also to repopulate the Earth after the radiation and whatever is decided. So they all take place in a different timeline some of them hundreds of years after some of them you know a couple hundred years after 100 years after you know whatever this one takes place as like something like 26 years i think if i remember right after the bombs and this is the first vault to open and become like the population survivors of humanity so it's the earliest version of of everything so I was just reading it because I've been trying to figure out what it was and I haven't had a whole lot of time lately. It says it's an online multiplayer action role. So is it is it a, an MMO? Yeah. So it's a, a Fallout MMO? So, yeah. Basically, that's what it is. Now, you need so many people in every in, in any particular server, and I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work. I, I, I've sort of been willfully ignorant on, on the, the finer details because I want to just play it. But um, it My- is... Online with other players inside of, like, picture Fallout 4, there would be other players around. But it's four times the size of the map of Fallout 4. And they basically explained, like, if you don't want to run into somebody, you don't necessarily have to. Oh, so does you this... You know, it, there's so much space. So the only issue with MMOs, and the, the, Sky, the Elder Scrolls MMO has the same issue, you actually, you basically are forced to become a, a, people, a, a, a non-single player. Like, can you play the single player and run into people, or are you going to... There, there is, yeah, there is a single player element to the game. It's not going to be the same sort of dynamic way where you're where you're affecting everything around you like that it's just sort of pre everything becoming a story the way that it has it's just like the settlers and i think it's going to focus more on on you know some combat and maybe some commerce like they seem to imply that they were going to um uh what do you call it um motivate people to to interact with each other based on you know commerce or goods or services or what have you or teaming up for certain as long as Thanks. you're not forced to be a group player, like I have no doubt when this comes out, you know, we're all get it and you know and, and James and I will be continually trying to kill each other as our tradition goes. Um Yeah. 
But well, is, is I think not... they're trying to um, uh, encourage cooperation. Is what I hear. Because just like mm. the guy on so- the anime Sword Art Online, I generally prefer single player uh, solo games. But however, if I get to play with these guys in a game that we actually like, it, it you know I, I may end up having a few long days at work. <laughs> Yeah, well, see, this is this is why I've been fucking trying to preach to you guys that I've been playing fucking uh, PUBG lately or, or Player Unknown's Battlegrounds for you uneducated folks out there. I didn't know what the uh, fuck it was until um, a couple of weeks ago. Well, you know what? I, I've been hearing about it, and it almost seemed like like something for like tweens or something. I don't know why I, I put that kind of a, a label on it in my mind, but um, I maybe took a Fortnite, and Fortnite looked very very sort of cheesy, and you know, not not a whole lot to it. Battlegrounds is the same sort of thing. It's a battle royale style game where there's this giant map that, that would take you forever to run from one side to the next on, um, with a hundred players in the same map. Now the idea is you drop in basically, you know, damn your bare ass naked or you might as well be, and you collect gear as you as you land in different places. And the map itself starts shrinking with this this sort of blue force field that starts surrounding you and it gives you different zones that you need to be inside of in order to sort of continue in that, in that particular map. Um, and everyone's trying to kill each other, but they're also trying to go progressively into the smaller and smaller circles. Um, but when it does that, it's so basically, obviously the gimmick is to get everybody to eventually meet in the middle or the people that are left. Yeah. You know? oh. So usually by the, by the time it gets really crazy, there's only about maybe 15 people left, and they all end up kind of meeting either in the middle of a field or in a town, and they start shooting at each other and, you know, last man standing. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. Doesn't, honestly, it doesn't sound like a game I would enjoy, even though the last part of it reminds me of the movie Looper. No, see, it's remarkably addictive. It, it's it's ridiculous. My It actually huh. has rekindled a friendship <laughs> that I had. Uh, James knows Brandon. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, he, uh, we, we, we started uh, chatting again. We getting a divorce so he's got a lot of free time that's beside uh. the point um apparently uh, not if he has more like, free time dude, to play download games PUBG. so know, is right? this a cell phone um, game or is this uh no X- well it started as pc and it actually moved to mobile and they just released an xbox one version nice maybe it's some so point that's what i downloaded it for it was, it was like 30 bucks but me him and a couple of buddies that he knows from work jump in as a squad and you know, if there's uh, a four man squad in the in the hundred players, there's obviously you know twenty five squads going at it against each other. But playing it with friends is hilarious, good times. Because there's there's two games that I want. There's a there's Fallout seventy six comes out in November, and there was it uh, Red Dead. Fucking game. Red yeah. Dead October, man! I'm October. Excited. So there's there's two games that I want like. I'll pretty much buy every Fallout game so far. Uh, I actually bought Fallout 3 for my computer, then I updated Windows, and then I could never play it again. That kind of pissed me off. Well, you know, and I, I, I have so much faith in Bethesda just from, from Skyrim or the Elder Scrolls in general and uh, yeah. the Fallout series. The Elder that if they Scrolls want to do this with Dishonor. Fallout... The Elder Scrolls yeah, and MMO... was actually a great little little, uh, little game, too. The but Elder Scrolls if MMO they want to do this with... Let me just put it, I did not Elder Scrolls like. what? The MMO Elder Scrolls, it was awful. That's I did what not I was like it. Too. Oh yeah, well that's um I've actually known people who really enjoyed that, but that's yeah. a really side project kind of thing. Yeah. Like it never affected the actual games themselves. True. But I mean, uh, of course I'm... so this one this one being the new fallout, if they want to sort of run this experiment to see if they have the the gameplay style to kind of break into this sort of deal, then then great. You know, they're gonna come out with the Skyrim six or five rather. <laughs> So are, are, no, they, are they going to have horse armor in Fallout 76? Are they going to have what? Horse armor. Horse armor. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea if there's horses. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss something? <laughs> I mean, you, you remember horse armor, right? And uh, Oblivion? Yep. That was a DLC. You spent like $15 for horse armor that didn't do diddly. Especially if you oh, had no, our favorite I did not, horse. I did not get the uh, the downloaded uh, horse armor. The downloaded content on that one. Oh, except I got Shivering Isles and and the uh, Knights of the Nine. I think it was. Oh, you never got the Alchemy Tower, the Wizard's Tower. I think it was called. Mm, no, that was a dope uh-huh. DLC. Especially if you could do the hack. <coughs> the actual. Yeah, I still got the fucking game. 
Uh. Oh, by the way, I was going to say, your guys' conversation about being super high level reminds me of an anime I've been watching. It's called How Not to Summon a Demon. Mm. Um, I, I really like the anime. There's elements that kind of annoy me. It's a tad bit of a harem, a harem anime, which generally drives me nuts. But this guy is a super high level uh, video game player of a certain game in the real world. These two video game characters um, <clears throat> summon him. So he ends up in the video game. And because of some of the stuff he has equipped in his character, he ends up enslaving the people who summoned him. And so he's just like this super guy who, uh, this character that can nerf everything. And it's, it's, it's absolutely hilarious to watch. Because he, there's some like so-called high-level character in this area he, he is in, tries to to do something and he just completely overpowers them. Um, yeah, check it out. It's a hilarious anime to watch. It's currently, um, I think, on Japan. It's on Crunchyroll. Um, did um did I ever talk you guys into watching uh, One Punch Man? Yes. Uh, oh, dude, I was watching that before you. I love that. My, that's one of my favorites. My favorite scene in that dude, whole that show. That really is one of my favorites. My favorite scene in the whole show is there's that scene in the dojo where the guy's moving that thing around and the one punch man gets serious and all of a sudden you see that old guy go, oh shit, and then just like move out of the way. <laughs> and one punch man's like, dude. I just like when he, when the, my favorite scene in the whole fucking show is when uh, there was a particular, you know, monster or whatever he was, he was trying to defeat. And, and uh, it's all satire, you know what I mean? So if, if you're sort of a, a, an anime fan out there, this is the most satirical look at anime in general. Oh, yeah. It's hilarious. But um, uh, the, uh, the one scene where he's trying to beat this one dude, and he's all huge and shit, and the guy yells at him, and he starts freaking out. And you assume it's because he's freaking out because of the monster, but he, he just realized that there was a two-for-one sale at the grocery store that he was yeah. missing. Yeah, and he started to get in a hurry and just beat the shit out of the dude really fast and, and left to try to get to the grocery store. The the ninja is another like, one. This is going to be my favorite show of all time. <laughs> the, the ninja one's the other part that I always thought was funny. That he kicked this ninja's ass and he really was just kind of goofing around. Um, you, you got to watch. Uh, got to watch that. Um, I was going to say. I was thinking while when we were talking about anime a couple of weeks ago and what anime kind of started you into it. Um, Helsing. I've been watching anime yeah. longer probably than both of these combined, James and Ryan. My first, uh, the Sci-Fi Channel, I think this was back on the Big Dish days, used to have what was called Japanimation Sundays. It used to be called Japanimation before, for some reason, they changed it to anime. I actually don't know why. There was a couple. There was Vampire Hunter D, the first one. There was Lenman, Lensman, Secret of the Lens. And there was another one. It was like Cyber City Odo, O-B... It's like O B E O, hmm. um, all great. Um, the Cyber City Odo Obo is kind of Odo Odo, whatever. It's kind of like a cyberpunk. Um, but check those out if you want to see some old school ones. Uh, Green Legend Rand is another one of my favorites. You could always do what I did the first time and watch X the movie. <laughs> watch the first episode of the series <laughs> and it'll explain the everything. <laughs> um, yeah, go watch X the movie first and then go watch the first episode. You would just be like, oh hour and a half and you could have done that <laughs> no no seriously it's, it's 100 percent true i bought the entire thing of x the series and yeah. i i told james hey i bought this you know let's watch it he's like okay and like after like the i think the disc i think there's like, three episodes on it james yeah, is like, like oh i finally get the yeah. movie yeah you can be watching the movie and you're just like this is the worst shit ever i will never watch anime again and then you watch the first it was like the first episode and you're just like why Why didn't they do, like, ten minutes of this? Yeah. Literally. It's a really good series, by the way, that, that also has my favorite orchestral um, instrumental in any anime is actually in that particular anime. Um, favorite yeah. soundtrack ever is still Cowboy Bebop. A big fan of jazz and, uh, jazz and blues. Yeah, I still like Helsing's, uh, the entire series. Like, you can actually buy the music for it, and it's actually really good music. You guys got to get it for the bloopers alone. <laughs> the bloopers in Berserk are way better. The bloopers are hilarious. Yeah, the bloopers are funny but the, the in, uh, in Helsing, but the bloopers from Berserk are the best ever. Um, so I, I want to see if you guys can figure out. Um, I'm not going to tell you where this happened, but this was yesterday. So, uh, the police have launched an investigation after officers were called to a wooded area Monday at 4 p.m. And there was 
a group of children accompanied by an adult that had been searching for what they thought to be kittens after hearing noises, but instead came across a man buck naked holding a cushion in front of him. What? Where do you think this happened? So can, can we play 20 questions? Sure. Were there banjos in somewhere in this town? Nope, no banjos. Um, Banjo playing is not from this area. Was it uh, a tech capital? Got to be Germany. All right, Ryan's on the right track. It's either Florida or Germany. It's always Florida or was Germany. It, was there Wiener Schnitzel? Cheshire police. Ha! England. <laughs> yep, uh, were the ones that had to launch their investigation. What was this dude on? Something fun, apparently. Yeah, obviously. Because it's either got to be I something mean, like, fun or horrible that you I'm wind just up buck curious, naked. Like, because I mean, the kids actually started looking for kittens, and I mean, was he really just sitting in the bush going, "Yeah, yeah"? You know what really happened? I mean, like what? You know what really happened? They, him and his mates were out partying. He got too screwed <laughs> up, and his mates just left him there without his clothes. Yeah, pretty much. But it was a rib. You, I mean, like, yeah, that's one of the weirdest things I've heard for this year. Just, hey, so I've got a. Uh, I've got a hypothetical okay. that I want to want to run by both of you. Um, this is this is this is a, uh, uh, an obsession of mine this morning uh, since this morning. Um, okay, hypothetical situation, and this is going to be oddly specific, so bear with me. Uh, oh, great! It's 1968. Okay, let's say um, you guys are astronauts being trained for the first mission to the moon. Okay. Uh, so they move you out to, you know, like the Mojave Desert somewhere out here in the Southwest and uh, say, hey, this patch of fucking desert looks just like the moon. Let's set camp up and, and train some astronauts. Um, so that's where you are. And uh, amongst your, your, your time there, you're, you know, out taking a walk or something of that nature. And, and you run across a, uh, a local sort of Indian or Native American, I don't know, it's an offensive term anymore. Um, uh, just wandering out there taking a walk also or something like that. And he's like, oh, hey, what, what, are, what are you white devils doing out here? He doesn't say that, but he's like, hey, what are you guys doing here? Uh, and, and you explain to him, oh, we're astronauts. We're, we're going to go to the moon. 